you have a, a lot of knowledge here about the, uh, the detriment of consuming dairy, especially for people with diabetes, right? So you grew up on a dairy farm, right? I did a lot of my growing up on my uncle's dairy farm in Wisconsin. I've been milking cows since I was eight. Yes. Okay, great. So at some point in your, uh, you, in your evolution, you, you learned about dairy products and then you stopped eating and drinking dairy products. So can you kind of give us an idea of uh, where you stand now on uh, whether dairy consumption is necessary? Oh, if, if there is one substance that I could remove from my patient's diets immediately, it would be those that come out of the udder of a cow. And uh, cows are lovely animals, but their lactation secretion is meant to turn their little 65-pound baby calf into a 700-pound cow as rapidly as possible. The cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid. And everything in that fluid, the, the proteins, the lipids, the sodium, the cholesterol, the hormones, the IGF-1, everything is meant to blow that calf up into a great big cow and, or it wouldn't be there. And if you're a baby calf, cool. You want lots of fat. You want lots of IGF-1. You want lots of protein. That's great. That's what nature intended. Uh, but if you're a human being, uh, especially one whose insulin receptors are already clogged up, you need, you need more butter fat. You need more uh, IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, the most potent growth hormone known to biology. Uh, uh, you need more lactose sugar, like General Custer needed more Indians at Little Bighorn. You know, it, it really it makes things so much worse, like throwing gasoline on a fire. And so I find that dairy products uh, are really problematic in so many conditions, from asthma to post-nasal drip to eczema, et cetera. But certainly for someone with diabetes, whose insulin receptors are already clogged up, who already have uh, ins uh, intramyocellular lipid in, in their muscle cells, and the last thing they need to be doing is eating butter fat and cheese and ice cream. It's fat and sugar, fat and sugar. And uh, those are the two things you don't want to be uh, consuming. And so, uh, no, one of the first things I do is... Uh, tell my patients strongly recommend that they, they evict the dairy products from their diet. Nothing in it that we need and a lot we don't need. Can you go into a little bit more detail about what IGF-1 is and whether and how dairy products and fat products, sorry, animal products promote IGF-1 production? Well, again, we all have the ability to make uh, this hormone, insulin-like growth factor 1. And, and when we consume the milk of a cow, uh, there's both IGF-1 in the milk, because it's the gift of the mother cow to the calf, but it stimulates the, the baby calf to uh, create IGF-1 as well. Uh, and that's going to increase the, the resistance to insulin. We don't have to get too much into the, the enzymatic inhibition, et cetera, but there's no question um, that IGF-1 is one of the main players in causing insulin resistance. And uh, if it's the insulin can't get into the muscle cells to work, uh, then sugar is going to pile up in the bloodstream. And it's one more of these uh, the confounding factors that are, uh, that it's like putting chewing gum in the door lock and, and, the, and the insulin, which is the key, can't turn the door lock. And uh, for that reason, dairy products, which carry this big load of IGF-1, which creates so much of it in, in the body, uh, is one of the most powerful stimulus for, uh, for insulin resistance. And that's the one thing uh, the person with diabetes just does not need. Got it. Okay, great. So dairy products can be, if, if somebody wanted to transition away from dairy products because they understand that the, uh, the detrimental effect that they have, um, oftentimes people report that getting off of dairy products can be really tough because dairy products have this sort of very sort of addicting nature to them. True or false? Or do you have any suggestions for like how to actually get off of dairy products? Right. Uh, in theory, uh, yes. Uh, as Dr. Neil Barnard has pointed out, the cheese especially uh, has substances called casomorphones in them. And in our brain, we have natural receptors for morphine-like molecules that uh, make us feel very good and help numb pain. And thank heavens we have this. It's a way we get through painful situations, et cetera. And, uh, and since dairy products stimulate uh, the production of your brain's caso, uh, the, the uh, 
casomorphones in, in dairy products stimulate those receptors in the brain. Uh, the theory is that's one reason why the baby comes back and wants to nurse at the breast because the lactose sugar is sweet and the casomorphones make them feel good. And it, it's why we keep nursing rather than uh, starving to death in infancy. And that's a wonderful mechanism. But cheese made from another mother who's got love putting lots of casomorphones in her milk, the cow, um, if you're sitting there shoveling in the, the cheddar and the gouda and the brie, uh, you're flooding your, your tissues with casomorphones and people start to like that. Is it a true addiction? Is it as severe as heroin? I don't think so. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anybody who get, goes into actual withdrawal symptoms. They start vomiting, et cetera, like the poor folks who really are addicted to heroin. It's not on that level. It's mostly people like the taste of, of salt and fat in their mouth. And that's what the, the taste attraction is for cheese. It's, it's salty and fatty. And in, in the, the, on a hot pizza there, you know, it tastes good. Um, so how to overcome the, the taste issues is the real issue. Uh, first of all, I tell folks, call cheese by its real name. There's nothing romantic about it. It is congealed fermented butterfat. <clears throat> and it's filled with cholesterol, hormones, uh, uh, estrogens. It's made from pregnant cows these days. Uh, the estrogen level is through the roof. And if guys are worried about growing man boobs, the last thing they want to do is eat cheese full of estrogens. And all dairy products are loaded with estrogens these days. Um, and that's what cheese is. And, and it smells like dirty socks. You know, it, it's, it, it, should, it should tell you something alone. So I say when you're, they say, how do I resist it? Call it by its real name. When you walk past a dairy case, say that is a chunk of congealed fermented butter fat. It's going to make me fat and sick and make my nose run, make my skin break out, and make me constipated. I can eat that stuff anymore. It's, you know, it's like your, your teddy bear you used to play with it when you were a kid. It's time to leave it behind. And, and really, it's time to leave that behind. And nowadays, there are so many other wonderful products to pour on your cereal, all the lovely plant milks, the rice milk and hemp milk and oat milk, and all the, use those instead. It, it, well, you know, is it that great a sacrifice to, to use rice milk instead of cow milk, you know, on your, on your cereal or on your berries? And find something else to eat besides ice cream. Um, my wife and I used to eat ice cream. Now we, um, yeah, well, now we've been vegan for years. But you know, we, used to, when we were growing up, you know, we ate it. Now we, uh, we'll get blueberries and pour oat milk or almond milk on them. Lovely, you know, it, it, it does that, the, you know, that dairy kind of sensation in your mouth. It, and after a while, your taste changed, you know. And I really start looking for the berries with the almond milk now. I don't think about ice cream any longer because I know what it really is. And now there's even these, these ice cream substitutes, the coconut ice cream and all that. No one's saying they're healthy. They're all congealed vegetable oil and sugar. They're, they're, they're treat foods. You know, the once a month, yeah, a spoonful on your, uh, on your dessert uh, you know, is fine. You know, they're, they're novelty foods. No, no one's saying they're, uh, they're healthy. But compared to true dairy products filled with estrogens, and IGF-1 and cholesterol and leukemia viruses. Cows get leukemia and the virus from viruses and it shows up in the milk. They're compared to actual dairy ice cream, good heavens, I'll take the coconut ice cream or the soy ice cream any day. So um, it's not that hard to make that jump, and, but it starts with understanding what dairy products really are and calling them by their real name. This is great. So can you give us a little insight into how these dairy products actually uh, get so much estrogen in, them in the first place? Oh, well, when any mammal is pregnant, uh, human mothers, uh, cows, bats, orangutans, uh, for however long the gestation goes, a human mother and a cow are pregnant for nine months, their body is surging with estrogens. You, and you see what estrogens do to a pregnant woman. Her, their breasts get bigger, their hair grows luxurious. You see their uterus get big. And it's absolutely essential to carry the pregnancy. Without estrogens, lots of estrogen in the bloodstream, uh, the uterus will expel the fetus. And so it's absolutely essential to have lots of estrogen in the bloodstream. And that's, uh, that's what happens uh, during pregnancy. Now, when the mother mammal, the cows and humans alike, deliver, uh, their baby, those estrogens don't disappear. Her body is still producing lots of estrogens, and all mother's milk has lots of estrogens in it. Um, in fact, uh, the nurses in the newborn nursery are well familiar with the phenomenon called witch's milk, and they notice that the little boy babies who are nursing on their mother's breast, they have milk coming out of their nipples 
because of the estrogens in mom's milk stimulates the breast of the little boys. And, and so even little boy babies uh, can, under the effect of the estrogens in mother's milk, uh, will, uh, uh, will show the effects. 